evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Janice Lowe. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. China's economic growth remains sluggish, with July data broadly missing expectations. Adventus Hospital pledges full disclosure after a woman dies shortly after going into labor. And the average number of children per woman drops to a record low in Hong Kong. China's economic recovery seems to be losing steam at a faster rate than expected, judging from the bleak July data. The decision by authorities to stop releasing the youth unemployment rate also drew concern. Chloe Feng reports. China's economic data once again missed expectations last month, and the gap seems to be widening. Industrial production grew by 3.7 percent year-on-year, much lower than an expected 4.6 percent rise. The only bright spots were solar cells and new energy vehicles, which jumped 65 and 25 percent respectively. Retail sales rose by just 2.5 percent from a year ago, the lowest in seven months. That was compared to expectations of a 5.3 percent improvement. Fixed asset investment increased by 3.4 percent for the first seven months of the year, slightly below the forecast of 3.7 percent. The real estate sector saw investment shrink by 8.5 percent. The property market is now entering an adjustment period, according to National Bureau of Statistics spokesman Fu Linghui. He admitted some leading developers are facing challenges, but the problems are only temporary and will be resolved. The biggest uh, direct concern is really what is going on in the property uh, market because we do see there is a quite a weak confidence not only from developers but also from home buyers. But of course, beyond that, I think the structural uh, weakness in the decelerating uh, growth in retail sales, households are still quite cautious. They do not want to consume. They want to save for the rainy days. It doesn't mean chi the Chinese economy is not growing, but it's simply there is like a gap between the government understanding or the acceptance level versus what the market would have expected. The Bureau also raised eyebrows after announcing it will no longer release the unemployment data by age. That triggered intense speculation online that authorities wanted to avoid revealing youth unemployment, which reached a record 21.3 percent in June. Fu said that the service needed to be further optimized. It's likely that probably based on the same methodology that the data uh, may actually point to a further increase in the youth uh, unemployment. So which basically means that I think um, uh, increasingly there can be like a structural problem that uh, China may face. The urban jobless rate stood at 5.3 percent last month, up one-tenth of a percentage point from June. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. Back in Hong Kong, Adventist Hospital in Chunwan said it was deeply saddened after a mother passed away last month after giving birth. A gynecology professor said even with the help of technology, childbirth remains a risky procedure to this day. The tragedy occurred on the 5th of last month at Adventist Hospital in Chunwan. A 31-year-old mother opted for natural labor, but after failing to make headway, her doctor suggested an emergency cesarean section. After successfully giving birth, the mother's situation deteriorated overnight. Doctors first prescribed medication and transfused blood before resorting to hysterectomy, the surgical removal of the uterus. The mother eventually passed away in the intensive care unit the following day. The hospital notified the Department of Health on the same day, but the incident only came to light recently. An obstetrics professor said even with the advance of technology, childbirth remains a risky procedure owing to unpredictable situations. If the bleeding is from the uterus, 
uh, which is likely to be, to be a case following giving birth, then you need to remove the source of the bleeding to try to save the life of the, of the, of the woman. But certainly um, a hysterectomy is uh, often considered the last resort to save the life of a woman. Um, and um, in the event of a massive, massive obstetric hemorrhage. Serious maternal injuries or even death are extremely rare in Hong Kong. There were only three such incidents in private hospitals in the past decade, two of which from last year. Public hospitals, meanwhile, has one case per year on average. The average number of children per woman has dropped below one for the first time, according to a survey which began half a century ago. Researchers urge the government to provide tailor-made incentives to boost the city's birth rate. Macy Mock reports. Since 1967, the Family Planning Association has conducted a survey every five years on childbirth trends. The latest survey involving 1,502 women last year came back with alarming results. Researchers found that the average number of children per woman tumbled to 0.9, falling below one for the first time. There is also a decline in the ideal number of children women and men wanted from around 1.7 in 2012 to 1.5 last year. Respondents agreed that better housing subsidies and flexible working hours will encourage them to expand the size of the family or to start one. Paul Yip, who led the research, said that financial support alone from the government is not enough these days. The childcare facility, the general social environment, the education environment, I mean, all this, it matters. I mean, you, if you can ask any couples in Hong Kong, I mean, some of them, they do want to have another baby, but they say, my, my apartment is so small. I mean, we just cannot afford to have one. I right, put it very frankly, right? Yeah, we have to do something. We have to make some tailor make, very focused, I think, towards the women who had that particular lead. Mona Lam, the association's executive director, called on employers to do their parts by offering family friendly measures. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. The city's mid-year population, meanwhile, has gone up for the first time in four years. There are now 7.5 million residents in Hong Kong, up 2.1 percent from the same period last year. The city recorded a net inflow of 174,000 people in the 12 months ending June, including 31,000 one-way permit holders. The government said more Hong Kong residents abroad have returned following the easing of COVID curbs. Its talent recruitment drive also lured mainland and overseas professionals to the SAR. Toners may help improve your skin's complexion and moisture, but only if you choose the right products. The Consumer Council has some tips on which ones to avoid. Cheryl Yun reports. For years, skincare experts have been split on whether toners really deliver on their claims of improving complexion and unclogging pores. The Consumer Council does not intend to wade into the debate, but it is warning people to use the product sparingly. In a test of 25 toners on the market, the watchdog found nine samples contained fragrance allergens, which exceeded limits set by the European Union. The substances could cause rashes, itchy skin, or even allergic contact dermatitis. This purifying toner from Origins, which cost $225 per bottle, contains four fragrance allergens, the most from the 25. It is also one of the three samples which failed to declare fragrance allergens on the packaging. Customs have been notified of the potential breach of the trade description ordinance. Researchers also detected ethanol in 10 samples, three of which in relatively high concentrations. The toner from Origins once again topped the list, boasting an ethanol concentration of 34 percent. While alcohol is not regulated in skincare products, the watchdog says the less of it, the better. 
for ordinary people, if you don't want to lose too much of your lateral moisture or dissolve too much of your sebum, and then you should try to avoid the product with high concentration of alcohol. So a little amount of alcohol help. They have certain benefit for the product. But if it's too high, that is a problem. While toners may help reduce the appearance of wrinkles, you may run the risk of skin allergy or damage if you use the product too often. The Consumer Council says that a good wash with facial cleanser is enough, and if you want extra protection, just apply some moisturizer. Cheryl Yun, HKIBC. New blood is on the way for the aviation industry. After the government gave the nod to the first round of applications to import foreign workers, more than 2,800 workers could arrive as soon as October and begin duty around Christmas. Macy Mock reports. While airlines around the world are taking off again after COVID, Hong Kong's aviation industry is struggling to scale up operations because of a manpower crunch. But relief could be on the way after the government approved the recruitment of 2,841 foreign workers to fill various vacancies. 29 aviation firms have submitted applications under the labor importation scheme announced in June. 28 of them were given the green lights in the first round. One applicant was rejected because it intended to offer wages lower than the median level, creating unfair competition with the local workforce. A quarter, or 719 of the slots, goes to passenger services officers. Other positions with hundreds of vacancies include ramp services agents, aircraft maintenance technicians, and even cabin workers. Authorities have previously set a cap of 6,300 foreign workers for the whole industry. That means after the first round, there are still roughly 3,450 quotas to be utilized. Vivian Lau, president of the Airline Service Providers Association, reviewed that aviation companies have been in touch with recruitment agencies on the mainland. Lao expects the first batch of workers to arrive as soon as October, and upon completion of training, they can start working around Christmas. Hong Kong Air Cargo Terminal's chief executive Wilson Kwong said that the scheme is vital to the airport, maintaining its crown as the world's busiest air cargo hub. He stressed the need to boost capacity in the long run even as Hong Kong's exports have taken a beating in recent months. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Overseas, former U.S. President Donald Trump has been indicted once again. The state of Georgia has charged him and his 18 former allies over their efforts to overturn his election defeat in 2020. Every individual charged in the indictment is charged with one count of violating Georgia's Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act through participation in a criminal enterprise in Fulton County, Georgia and elsewhere to accomplish the illegal goal of allowing Donald J. Trump to seize the presidential term of office beginning on January 20th, 21, to block the counting of the votes of the presidential electors who were certified as the winners of Georgia's 2020 general election. The nearly 100-page indictment listed 41 charges, of which the racketeering offense carries a maximum jail term of 20 years. Other defendants included Mark Meadows, Trump's former chief of staff, and his former lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. Trump, who remains the Republican frontrunner in the presidential race, repeated his claim that the charges are politically motivated. The Hang Seng Index dropped to its lowest level in six weeks, Following fresh data suggesting China's economic growth is losing momentum. The index ended the day down by 192 points. 
to the top 10 active stocks. Tencent lost 60 cents, Tracker Fund lost 19 cents, while Alibaba lost $1.60. Ping An lost $1.05, while China Mobile gained 45 cents. On to the weather now. It will be very hot tomorrow despite one or two showers. Temperatures will range between 29 and 33 degrees. Mainly cloudy with occasional showers in the coming days. That's our main news for Tuesday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Janice Lowe. Thanks for watching. Good night.